in this video, we're going to graphically test data to see if we end up with the special case of first order kinetics or second order kinetics. So this is a particular reaction that we can run a rate on and we have time in seconds. This is always going to be represented by the x-axis and then the concentration of the iodide ion is written here, molarity. And we are not going to graph this as y, but if we're going to test for first or second order, we're going to take this data and either graph it as the natural log or 1 over the data. Since I know what this reaction is going to be, I'm going to test for second order initially. And so our L1, if we have the TI calculator under the stat mode, I will edit the list, so we see stat and edit, and we'll put values in for L1, so the time is always x. So we can just enter those in, 0, 400, 800, 1200, and 1600. Now L2, since I'm testing for second order, L2 is going to be 1 over the concentration of I minus. So I can do that individually. If I take uh, 0 0.072, and if I plug that in, the x to the minus 1 key takes the reciprocal of that number. So I can take the reciprocal of that and enter it. And then I do the same for the other data points, 0 0.057 with the reciprocal. And 0 0.046 with the reciprocal, 0 0.037, reciprocal of that, and 0 0.029. And take the reciprocal of that. So if this gives me a linear equation, then I know I've got second order kinetics. So if I go to stat, now I'm going to arrow over to calculate, and I'm going to test to see if I have a linear equation. So I'm going to hit number four. And when I do that, I get r squared equals 0.92. So for second order, I get an r squared value of 0.092. That means that equation is not linear. In order to exhibit linear behavior, r squared needs to be 0.99 or 1. If we had r squared of 1, we'd have a perfectly linear equation where all points did lie on the same line. So now I'm going to test for first order. I'm going to test for first order. Remember what is linear there is the natural log of the concentration of I minus. That's what we want to enter as L2. L1 is still going to be the time. And so now we're going to take the natural log of each one of these values. And then if we do get a linear equation, then we know we've got second or we've got first order kinetics. So if I go back to that, I can go back to my stat and edit. And I just need to change this. So I can take the natural log of each one of these points. The natural log 0.057 and 0.046, natural log 0.037, and finally the natural log of 0.029. I'm going to go back to the stat key and calculate a linear equation. And when I do that, oh, that's still the other one. When I do that, I get an R squared value of 0.999. So that tells me that this is a first order equation. So that means that this is linear. So I do have a first order rate law. And since that's the case, I can just write, I know that rate equals k times i minus to the first power. Now to obtain the rate constant, because when we graph this, if we graph the natural log 
of I minus versus time, we're going to get a linear equation with a negative slope. And so um, this fits the equation uh, y equals ax plus b. And remember that first order equation is the natural log of that equals negative kx plus the natural log of the initial concentration. So because this is the first order equation, the slope is actually going to be the opposite of the rate constant. So when I look on the calculator to get the equation of the line, here I see that the slope A is negative 5.6 times 10 to the minus 4. So I'll write that on here also. A equals negative 5.6 times 10 to the negative 4. And again, that comes from the slope of the line. We don't really care about the y-intercept here. We're just concerned about the slope. That means my rate constant, which is the opposite of A, you can see that from this uh, relationship here, K is going to be a positive, 5.6 times 10 to the minus 4. So when you actually write the rate law, I'm going to substitute that into the value. So our rate law, rate equals 5.4 times 10 to the minus 4 times I minus. So we can obtain everything we need from the rate, or for the rate law, from the calculator. And it gives us the line of best fit. Another way we can do this, I just want to make sure that we know that we have to put the natural log in. A shortcut, I don't know how much of a shortcut it would be, but when we edited our list, we could plug these values in, 0 0.072, 0 0.047, 0 0.046, 0 0.037, and 0.029. If we plug the values in, then we can go up to the list, and now we can take the natural log of those. If I take the natural log, and then I have to tell it to take the natural log of my L2 list. So I do that by just pushing uh, this key here that says L2. So if I do that, that takes the natural log of all those values at once. So that's a little bit quicker. And if we go to the stat calculate linear equation, we'll see that we still get the same equation for that line. So taking the natural log of the entire list is a little bit of a shortcut. We could also determine the half-life here. And the half-life, we can't really see from here. The half-life would be when we have exactly half. This is going to be pretty close. Half of 72 is, is 36. But if we calculate the half-life, remember for a first order, T1 half is going to be 0.693 over the rate constant K. So the T1 half is 0.693 divided by this rate constant, 5.4 times 10 to the minus 4. And if we do that, pull it up here, 0.693 divided by 5.4 EE negative 4, we're going to get 1,283 seconds. 83 seconds. And if we compare that to the table, that's pretty close. So the half-life is when exactly half of what we started with is still present. So um, that's kind of a confirmation there. You just look at the table. Okay. So again, that would be data that after we plugged it in graphically, we tested for second order, we got a bad R-squared value, so then we tested for first order. And remember the Y values, or L2, has to be the natural log of these concentrations. And that's always going to give us a linear equation with a negative slope. 
and so the rate constant is always the opposite of the slope that would be given to us. And once we know it's first order, we can write the rate law with the rate constant k, and then if we wanted to, we could calculate the half life.